And to talk a bit more about what happened in Texas, we're joined now on the line by Bill Booth. He is the uh, program director at the Institute of the Americas at King's, Co uh, sorry, ex excuse me, at University College London. Thanks for joining us on France 24, sir. Just tell us, first of all, what was your initial reaction to hearing that news coming out of San Antonio? Well, it's horrifying, of course. Um, but the, the way that this is often reduced to sound bites by politicians as, as a merely a tragic incident that isn't placed then in, in its broader context is why we keep seeing things like this happen again and again. And it's it's frustrating and, and saddening that, that there's no real sign uh, that these vast movements of people in appalling conditions um, are, are being mitigated. You talk about the comments made by politicians in the wake of tragedies like this. Um, let me uh, remind you what the governor of Texas, a Republican, Greg Abbott, had to say um, after this news emerged. He explicitly blamed President Biden, saying these deaths are on Biden. They are the, the result of his deadly open border policies. What do you make of that? Well, it's pretty obscene. It's it's completely fallacious. There's this is one of the big myths that's being pushed about the the, the change in administration from Trump to Biden is that there was a big reversal of immigration policy, and there simply wasn't. There's a fairly direct line um, right back to the 1990s in lots of ways, but certainly lots of the uh, innovations that uh, that were put in by people like Stephen Miller in the Trump White House, leaning very heavily on Title 42 expulsions, um, you know, 60 to 100,000 people a month uh, in that regard, um, and also on what's called the Migrant Protection Protocols, which is a gross misnomer because it's ended up with what's called Remain in Mexico, whereby all kinds of people who don't have any particular connections in Mexico are relocated or held in very dangerous conditions in border towns, which are simply not equipped to host them. Um, for, for very long periods of time, there's lots of kidnappings, lots of murders, uh, lots of sexual violence. And this was the price that, that Trump extracted from the Mexican government, saying that he would introduce tariffs if Mexico didn't become a way station for all these people, most of whom are not Mexican, right? Like the vast majority of people are coming from further afield, but they come through Mexico because this is a very well-established migration route. And then on to San Antonio, which you mentioned before, which is a great hub of onward migration once people get through, if they get through. And as we can see, it's an incredibly dangerous journey. Indeed, and the numbers of people crossing into the United States are on the rise. In May this year, a record number of undocumented migrants were detained trying to enter the United States from Mexico. The risks, as you explain, are extremely clear. So why is it that so many people are still trying to make that journey to the United States? Well, this is the other great myth, that, that, you know, that there's an open border is one. The other great myth is that these are simply people choosing to go for a better life, which is the way that it's often euphemistically put by by the same politicians. And it, there are huge structural factors in play that go back decades, even longer, uh, as to why people try to move from various parts of Latin America and other parts of the world to the United States. And when you look at the places that have sent most people um, to the United States in, in recent years. There's a great concentration in what's called the Northern Triangle of Central America. That's it. That's to say El Salvador, Guatemala and Honduras. And these were places that were completely destabilized um, in the 1980s by civil wars in which the United States played a very important role in, in providing arms to, to murderous regimes. Um, that's We've seen that come back in terms of gang violence later on. We've seen it through the Obama and Trump era deportations. And that cycle uh, of destabilization and violence hasn't gone away. Uh, and there's generations of people who have been ping-ponging between the United States and Central America, not finding themselves um, a lasting home in either place because of the policies both of their own governments and the policies of the United States, which I'm afraid has had a very much a have your cake and eat it uh, attitude to migration for a very long time. The United States has always been a migrant nation. You know, nearly 90 million people have migrated through their own choice or having been forced to to the United States since 1783. Um, and yet politicians pretend that, that that's not the case and that, that there are people who have a right to be there and people who don't. And 
the United States is deeply entangled in many structural problems which cause these long-standing patterns of migration. Finally, sir, just briefly, if you can, you know, you've talked about uh, some of the policies implemented by previous U.S. administrations, notably the Trump administration. We are, though, of course, under a, a new government now, the Biden government. Um, so how can avenues for legal migration to the United States be expanded, given uh, the problems you're talking about? Well, when Biden came in, there was a lot of talk, a lot of optimism about how these things were going to be fixed, that Trump's mistakes in this area or, or you know, very repressive policies in this area were going to be corrected. And we simply haven't seen that. Um, there's been all kinds of delays, bartering uh, over, you know, the size of the border patrol, over routes to legal citizenship and so on. And it doesn't seem like there is the political will in the current Democratic Party leadership to do much about that. And I point viewers towards an excellent interview or article about Andrea Flores, who was part of the National Security Council for a few months, uh, in which she details exactly how that optimism turned towards a, a, a really exasperating pessimism in, in changes to these policies. Bill Booth from UCL London. Thank you very much indeed, sir, for your time on the programme. Thank you.